It's because if you want all fruits, all vegetables, you will find them there. It's a fertile land. Just like Canaan. Amen. So I am from Canaan. <laughs> so I stay in Kabani. Uh, I'm a minister of the word of God. I was here, I think in 2013, same conference talking about uh, love, courtship and marriage. Most of the people I was preaching to, or some of them are married, I'm aware of that. And uh, I believe that I have come to release your, your wedding also after you graduate, blessings will come to your life. Things will begin to happen. Now, I, I don't preach to everybody. You, you will learn when I preach, I don't preach to everybody. There are people I find very difficult to preach to. <laughs> Honestly, I only preach to people who, certain type of people, and that's why we're going to talk uh, to those kind of people today. Um, I'm going to talk to somebody today. Let's get to Genesis. Genesis 24. And we're going to read... Even if it's one person that I have come for, I will give it my best. Because I know this one person is going to change the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just tell the one next to you, he said, no, this man has come for me. <laughs> say, say, I don't know about you, but I know he has come for me. <laughs> Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. I have sons and daughters here. I love them so much. They know we don't compromise when it comes to the word of God. Amen. Let us stand as we read the word because we have to read one another word. In the King James Version, it reads as follows. We start from, maybe let's read from verse number 64 until 67. Genesis 24. Uh, from verse 64 to 67 and Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lightened off the cable for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us and the servant had said it is my master therefore she, she took a veil and covered herself can you see where the veil thing comes in weddings yeah, that's where it comes from. Verse 66. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent, into his mother, Sarah's tent, and took Rebecca, and she became his wife. Now this is this is more important. And he loved her. He did what? He did what? And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. God bless you. You may be seated. And he loved her. Hallelujah. He did what? He loved her. Amen. I told you I came to preach to someone and actually I came to preach to Isaac. Somebody say I am Isaac today. <laughs> because if you are not Isaac you are not gonna you, you won't be able to hear what I'm talking about. You know there are certain sermons and certain preachings and certain pastors who are meant for certain people. Amen. Amen. Who is Isaac? Isaac was a very important man. Isaac was the son of Abraham. All of you know Abraham? How many of you have heard of Abraham? Have you heard of Abraham? Abraham was a great man. Actually, it is through this man Abraham that God introduced um, a New Testament. I remember one day I was speaking to some people, you know there is 
there is a group of people who are talking about tithe, and I'm sure you've seen that on Facebook, Twitter. You know, people who teach about, they speak tithe, they say, hey, tithe is Old Testament, and most of the time they are the ones who are old. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. You know, there are certain things you must leave them to pastors who are called to do that. Because they don't understand. Um, we call it the New Testament, but in actual fact, the New Testament was there before the Old. That's why we say the Old Testament is the shadow of the New. You, you cannot have a shadow of something that does not exist. You get what I'm trying to say? It has been there. God said to Abraham, I will give you children. Because remember, Abraham, when God accepted him, it was because of faith. Somebody say faith. faith. Not because of the law, the law was not even there. But Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him as righteousness. So the New Testament was there already. Okay? Amen. was not an ordinary man. He was a great man. Now, this man did not have a son, but God says, you see, the way you are anointed, the way you are so important, remember, I have made you a father. You will have nations. You will have so many children. But he said, you know, because of that which I have invested in you, I'm going to do a miracle for you. I will give you a son even though you are old. The Bible says God gave Abraham a son by a miracle. And now when Abraham was old, he realized that and now that he's old, he was to die. But there was something that has happened. Already Isaac, because he had only one son, forget about the other one. We know the other one was not a legitimate son. Amen. So he had only one son. Therefore, he said, because Isaac carries the mantle, he carries the anointing that I have, he carries the promises of God. Therefore, this man, Isaac, my son Isaac, I'm not going to treat him like I treat him. most of the children out there. No, I'm going to have special treatment for him. Why? Because of what he carries. You get what I'm trying to say? Even in the church, I don't treat people the same. When you read in the Bible, you will find that Jacob, the Bible says, he loved Joseph more than all his sons. Huh? And Joseph was the one who was given a robe, a tunic of many colors. He did not give it to many others. He gave it to one Joseph. Why? Because Joseph was a bright boy. Joseph was a decent boy. When his father looked at him, he could realize that Joseph was not like many other young men that we see today who are running around. Today they are in church. Tomorrow they are in Shabi. Today they worship. Tomorrow they are dancing to DJ. What, 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 what? But Joseph was different. That's why his father loved him. I always say to my sons and daughters, you should be worried if your pastor, your spiritual father, uh, you know, doesn't, if, 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 if he doesn't like you, you should be worried. I know some of you, even if my, my, my pastor doesn't like me, I, God, you know, sometimes we represent God. If I don't like you, it might be the same way that God is looking at you. I'm telling you, because we represent God here. We are anointed. We are the mouthpiece of God. Whatever we do, we are not pursuing our will, but we are doing the will of the one who has sent us. Jacob loved Joseph. But look at this. When he loved Joseph, the Bible says, when God was about to bring a dream, he did not give it to the ones who were hated. He gave it to the one who was. His father loved him. 
and also his father loved him. Maybe the reason his father loved him, it was because he could see his father love him. Maybe the reason we don't, we don't really like you in church is because even God doesn't like you. said concerning Esau even before he was born. He said, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. I know you don't want to hear that. Why, why did he hate Esau? Because Esau did not value the things of God. There are people who don't value the things of God. You say you are a Christian, but your life is way what? You live like somebody who is not born again. Even in the campus, they don't know you are born again. You don't want them to know. <laughs> yes, you don't want them to know. Because of the way you conduct yourself. God loves people who bring glory to his name. God loves people who are completely sold out to him. People who are saying, I am no longer living for myself, but I live for him who died and rose for me. I, I hear what I'm saying to you. So Isaac was an important son, and, and Abraham knew that this one is going to carry the mantle. You know, even in the church, we are always looking for sons and daughters who are serious with God. When others are doing their things, they say, no, we want God in our life. We want to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We want to carry the mantle. We want to change the world for Jesus Christ. We look for those. You know why? We don't want to go to the grave with this anointing. You still remember Elisha? He died and went to the grave with it. Because the one who was following him was a fool. Sometimes, you know, there are certain people who must be told that the way they behave, they, are, they behave like fools. Yeah. <laughs> it's very quiet. <laughs> I'm sure somebody said, where did you get these guys? <laughs> I'm not a guy, I'm a man of God. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Amen. Abraham knew he could count on Isaac. Can I ask you a question? Can your pastor count on you? Can he? You know, I've got sons and daughters who are in this campus, and every time they get whatever scent they have, they send 10% back home. But they're not working. They're still in school because they understand. They value spiritual things. They know how important it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me say this before I can get any further. Listen, we live for Jesus Christ, and that's all. That's why we can sacrifice anything for the sake of Him. But if you're still living for yourself, then you've not even started living. Do you get what I'm saying? We live for Him. Everything we do is about Him. Even your education is to bring glory to Him. Even when you get a job, now the kingdom of God is going to benefit because of your job. Because whatever you do is to give glory to your Creator, to the one who died and rose for you. Amen. Amen. Just touch the one next year and say, we, we invited the right one. This one is the right person. <laughs> are speaking the right things. But when they are jumping, you know you are entertaining them. Amen. Now, Abraham knew he can count on Isaac and he said, 
said. He said, now this is what Maybe let's read it. So that you don't say, uh, the pastor said. You will say, um, the Bible said, amen. Because whatever we preach, we don't preach our own opinions. We preach the word of God. Genesis 24, uh, verse number 2. Quickly there. Just the same. Just verse number 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of, of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son, of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. And I will make this swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son, of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son, Isaac. Now listen. This man knows what he has invested in his son. And he says, I want to be involved. I know you hate that part. You know these pastors, they want to choose for us. <laughs> you, you remember that? They want to choose for us. You know these pastors? No, can I have to choose myself? Yeah, I have to choose. I have, look at even the clothes that you choose. You don't even know how to choose. <laughs> Thank you. 
that we have invested upon our daughters and upon our sons. We very 